up next on Eco Company. Eco-friendly guitars? That's right, and what makes them good for the planet. We've written a responsible timber policy here at Taylor Guitars. Woods are available. It, it's our responsibility to procure those woods legally and, uh, and do it responsibly. What some guitar makers are doing to preserve natural resources and eliminate waste. Plus, eco-friendly shopping, alternatives to going to the mall. So someone will come in to our store and trade in their old clothes to purchase new clothes. What you can do to get brand name fashions and save resources too. Then two girls with a passion for the planet and buying local. You know, we really want to promote this idea around um, supporting local businesses and supporting local industry. Looking good and doing good while dressing retro. And one inspiring teen. We learned that, you know, adults listen when kids are talking. From books to movies to speeches, this Southern Californian wants to inspire change. All that and more coming up on Eco Company. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to Eco Company. I'm Brendan. And I'm Jelena. Everyone loves a great guitarist, right? Yeah, but do you ever think about how their guitars are made? Or whether they're made with a plan in mind? Adam's visiting one guitar maker to find out. We hear a lot about organics and sustainable products every day. But here's one you might not have thought of before. Guitars. Let's go see how they make them. Welcome to Taylor Guitars in El Cajon, California. Acoustic and electric guitars line the walls in every color of the rainbow. But underneath it all, they're all green. We're talking green as in eco-friendly. We've written a responsible timber policy here at Taylor Guitars, and we also have a, a floor policy, um, which addresses the forest floor and how we will continue to sustain that, that environment for the villages and work with them to continue that process. Whether it's getting the wood from forests in Central America or making masterpieces back at the shop, these guitars were made with a thought for the planet every step of the way. The top is two pieces, and it's considered a book match top. Chris Wellens has spent nearly 20 years here. My first job was actually working in the milling department, cutting various pieces of wood for the guitars. Now he's VP of manufacturing, and he's giving us a factory tour. So what we've done with this chunk of wood is we've cut it and removed it from this end. We've milled it to a smaller size. This is where the three heels of the neck will come from. Guitar manufacturing has come a long way. New technology and better design help save resources. We were taking one block of wood and we would cut two necks out of that block of wood. Through this process of the NT or new technology neck, we increased our yield by 33%, and now we're able to, to get three necks out of the same size block of wood. Um, that's made a huge impact on not only the yield and the wood usage, but also the sustainability at the forest level. It all starts with the source, and that's tone wood. That is, wood used to make musical instruments. Woods are available. It, it's our responsibility to procure those woods legally and, uh, and do it responsibly. Taylor sources much of its wood from Central America. So this is an example of the, the mahogany lumber that we procure from Central America. Um, it comes to us on this rough form. It's kiln dried. And what we do here at Taylor Guitars is take this lumber, mill it down to a smaller size four by four uh, square lumber, smooth on each, each side, and then we'll actually resaw this into the three pieces of the neck wood that we saw on that guitar earlier. Mahogany is widely popular around the world but it's been over-harvested through the years, so some varieties are commercially extinct. Taylor is using other methods to obtain it. Yes, it's actually started with us using dead mahogany trees and seeing if we could remove those from the forest and utilize them for a source of, of neck wood, along with a variety of other parts that go inside the guitar. Guitar makers know it's vital to sustain their main resource, so Taylor and three other manufacturers are all part of the Greenpeace Music Wood Coalition. Its goal is to change logging practices. The purpose of the, the Music Wood Coalition is to actually go to the forest and see it. Um, one thing that many of us don't know is 
they'll go in and clear cut an entire forest trying to get specific trees and what they're doing is cutting down everything in the process. What we're looking to do is get Sitka spruce out of the forest and let other trees grow. Helping villages sustain their economies is also a priority. We are paying the villages specifically for their work and their value added work versus paying a third, fourth, and fifth party where one, one vendor or one corporation would go onto the ground, clear cut the entire area, and then produce parts or pieces out of that lumber and then sell it all over the world. Back in the factory, it's showtime. They use precise lasers and efficient design to get the most out of every piece of lumber. They take this portion here and they cut multiple truss rod covers out of it, right. which is used to cover the truss rod opening on the peg head of the, of the guitar. Okay. Whereas in years past, this would have just ended up being thrown awesome. away. And check this out. Utilizing the laser, we've increased our yield because look at the laser line here. It's very small and we're not just throwing wood away with every pass of the cut of a table saw. We're able to utilize this entire piece and get two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 pieces out of this versus more than likely six if we cut this on a table saw. Tracking where wood is sourced from is also an important part of the process. What they're doing is working on barcoding all the lumber, um, actually taking photographs of the tree that they're cutting and barcoding each stick or each log or piece of lumber coming from that tree and then coding it and tracking it up for us so we can actually track that barcode back to the tree that it was cut from. So from sourcing sustainable wood and helping villages to reducing waste and recycling, Taylor's giving new meaning to what it means to be a guitar hero. This mahogany guitar sounds great. And who would have known that it's made sustainably too? Something to think about next time you're strumming a tune. Thank you very much. Coming up, shopping with the planet in mind. So someone will come in to our store and trade in their old clothes to purchase new clothes. Saving resources, energy, and money. And looking fabulous. Then two girls making retro a fashion trend. We just really embrace the idea that you can actually repurpose a lot of things and still look cutting edge. Making old new again and keeping it local. More Eco Company is next. Everyone likes to look good, and shopping for clothes can be a lot of fun. When you want to shop, where do you think of? The mall, right? But did you know the choices you make when you shop can actually make the world a better place? Here's one of my favorite stores. Let's go check it out. This is Crossroads Trading Company. It's a used clothing store, and it can be a lot more fun than shopping at the mall. Instead of racks and racks of the same things, you'll find unique clothing to fit your unique style. And there's something for everyone. Of course, one good reason to shop at a used clothing store is the prices. I think I'll try this on. It's cute. You can find cool clothes in great condition for a lot less money. We price things a quarter to a third of what it's sold for at retail. There are a lot of top labels, and you can be creative in putting things together. These are cute and they're my size. Big clothing companies use a lot of resources and a great deal of energy to produce new clothing, and much of it ends up in landfills. They also spend millions of dollars on advertising, which goes into the cost. I definitely like this one. Buying used clothes. Perfect for summer, too. Saves the natural resources and the energy used in the production and transportation of new clothes. I'll try that on. And you can recycle, too, by selling, trading, or donating clothing you've outgrown or just don't want to wear anymore. Store manager Julia Washburn explains how it works. So someone will come in to our store and trade in their old clothes to purchase new clothes. And we go through their clothes and we're looking for things that are in current style and good condition. Um, so we will give it a retail price and then you can get 35% cash to 50% in trade. Okay, it's time to go try things on. Yes, 
You can often get great stuff and name brands at a store like this. But no matter where you go to donate or trade or sell your used clothing, you are reusing and recycling. Saving natural resources, saving money, and having fun, too. That was amazing. I got great clothes for a great price. You know, there's a lot of used clothes stores out there, and everyone seems to have their favorite store. Jordan found one started by two girls with a passion for the planet. Hey guys, we're headed to one of my favorite stores. And let me tell you, it's a unique shopping experience. Yep, it's right here. What do you say we check it out? This narrow path leads to Retrofit Republic. It's a vintage clothing store. You are greeted by founders Julia Bree and Jenny Ton as you enter their small showroom lined with racks of clothes. To check it out, you need an appointment, and that gets you personal service. When people come over, we want them to feel like guests in our home. You know, they could hang out with Jenny and I. We're a lot of fun, we think. <laughs> everything in their showroom is secondhand or vintage, and you'll find a bit of everything. They love the classic look of antiques, and everything here represents their personal style. Everything in this store is hand-selected by Julia and myself, um, and everything is really taken care of with love. If there's anything that needs to be mended, we do it all. Everything's cleaned. Jenny says the idea for the store began with a yard sale. A lot of people came out, and we got a lot of great feedback, and people were asking us if we were going to do this again, and then that that's when it clicked. There's a lot of people who are interested in the items that we were selling. Um, and at the same time, it falls into the line of sustainability where we're not selling things that are new, so people aren't buying items that are manufactured new. It's a philosophy that began at a very early age. And growing up, it was there was never this idea of, of throw away anything. It was like with a little bit of work, um, you could repurpose, re-edit, um, recycle anything and everything from food to clothes to toys. Mm -hmm. When we started out with Retrofit Republic, we, we just really embraced the idea that you can actually repurpose a lot of things and still um, look cutting edge. On that note, I would love to get my own fashion consultation to possibly find that one-of-a-kind eco-friendly outfit. What do you guys say we get started? Yes. We try to be very creative in how we source things. Um, it could be anywhere from yard sales, garage sales, thrift stores, vintage stores, donations. Um, we try to diversify how we get things. That's super cute. I love the pattern. dress. Perfect for that. the spring and summertime. Yeah. There is one in particular that Perfect purple, my favorite color. Oh, so cute and classy at the same time. I love it. Okay, let's try them on. Okay, let's do it. Oh, oh my god. god. <laughs> the dress looked great, but these girls believe in accessorizing. So they suggested a vintage belt to add shape and an eye catching accent, some simple, classy earrings, a vintage watch, a natural vintage bag, and voila. A complete outfit. Well, I definitely love it. You guys did an excellent job putting this together, which I didn't think was going to work at the beginning, but you know what? We definitely made it work. Yes. Making it work is what these guys do. Buying used or vintage clothing from places like Retrofit Republic not only saves resources and energy by reusing and recycling, it also supports local businesses. You know, we really want to promote this idea around um, supporting local businesses and supporting local industry and um, this concept around slow fashion that you don't have to like churn through everything within like a matter of three months, but you know, hold on to that garment, you know, with, you can belt it, you can accessorize it, you can do a lot of different things with it. We're huge supporters of the local economy, <laughs> yeah. obviously. <laughs> So people can look cute, save money, save resources, save energy. So literally, it's a win-win situation for everybody. We think so. Yes, <laughs> look good, do good. <laughs> Coming up, one teen on a mission to inspire. I first had to change myself before I asked anyone, you know, to change. <laughs> now she's inspiring with a book, videos, and speaking engagements. Her story straight ahead on Eco Company. Some of 
us are cynical about climate change, and understandably so. Is it real? How does it affect me? And is there anything I can do about it? All common questions. And this next scene was definitely from that camp. Until she found there are solutions and we can all do our part. Good afternoon. My name is Jordan Howard. Um, Meet college student Jordan Howard, an environmental activist, public speaker, filmmaker. Oh, and yeah, she's even helped edit a book. I hope to inspire people to change their behavior. This green teen's mission to educate and inspire others to protect the planet is one we had to hear about in person. So we traveled to the coast of Southern California to chat with this multitasking powerhouse. So this all started at your environmental charter high school. Tell us about that. Tell us about the programs offered to the students and how the whole school sort of worked. Well, Environmental Charter High School, it's a small school in Lawndale. The purpose of the school is to teach us to be lifelong learners and to be agents of change in our community. It was there where Howard learned about global warming in the ninth grade, but her road to eco-activism was anything but smooth. I always got in trouble because I used to always be the only one to raise my hand and say, <laughs> why are we learning this? This is not important. I don't think we need to be, you don't, you shouldn't force this upon us. I was resistant and I thought it was a movement for hippies and I thought that I had no relation to the environmental movement. But soon she had a change of heart. Something clicked. That I was resistant because I didn't know. I wasn't educated. I didn't really know what the solutions were to global warming. We were taught about global warming and we knew all the effects of global warming, but we didn't know what we could do to prevent global warming. I felt empowered when I learned that I could actually do something to combat global warming. I can do something in my own life, in my family's life. So that's what I started to do. I started, I first had to change myself before I asked anyone, you know, to change. <laughs> Once the light bulb came on, she didn't waste a second. And it didn't take long for people to know she meant business. And then I went home and said, okay, we need to green the house. We need to start going to farmer's markets and refusing plastic bags at the stores. My parents thought I was crazy. And I was just like, okay, I'll come back later. So I had to, they had to see that I wanted to make the change and then they were really, they wanted to do it as well. She took action at school too. Working with the Surfrider Foundation, she started a campaign for teens called Rise Above Plastic. And I learned my 10th grade year about plastics and how they were harmful for not only the environment but for humans, bo human bodies because of the chemicals that are inside, I was really empowered to do something and I was just like okay, if I know that I'm not the only one that didn't know this before we learned this, so I wanted to create something for students where students taught students um, to rise above plastics. She gathered a few dozen students and trained them to go out into the community. So it was all for students. We went, ended up going to businesses, schools in our community, different schools, and we learned that, you know, adults listen when kids are talking as well. Right, these and were teenagers. Exactly. And teenagers listen when teenagers exactly. are talking as well. Howard's taken her message to LA's Environmental Youth Conference, to the International Plastics Are Forever Conference, and to the TEDx series. I use plastic all day long, so it's easy to get rid of all we have. It's easy to end plastic pollution. I mean, I use this every day. We just have to change our behavior. And there's even more. She's also a filmmaker. My first project was A Day in the Life. So um, I, when, when I was first inspired, I saw, I saw that the green movement needed education. People needed to learn because, you, I mean, we're still in a time where there are millions and millions of people that don't even know what climate change is. And they can't explain to you what climate change is in three sentences. And that's a problem. Uh, that's a really big problem when we're trying to get people to change their behavior. So I said that everything that I ever want to do, I want to educate people. I just want to make sure I'm educating people. So we did that with that film. We taught people from little kids to grown-ups to teenagers how to go green in their lifestyles. She's also doing that through the latest book she's had a hand in. It's called Green My Parents. First thing that we teach in Green My Parents, we teach the kids how to read their electric bill and how to understand their electric bill and understand kilowatts. Because I even asked my mom one time, I was just like, while we were writing the book, do you know how to like read an electric bill? And she says, I don't, I actually don't. <laughs> so we, before we start teaching them how to save money, how to, sh how to shave 10% off of their electric bill, we teach them how to understand their electric bill and understand the kilowatts that they use per month, kilowatts that they use per year. We teach them it's energy, water, how to green your pets, how to green your home, how to green your clothing. Whether it's through public speaking, movies, or the pages of a book, for Howard, it's all about educating and giving people solutions. It's also about showing teens they can make a difference. 
we're just reminding kids that, you know, you can, you have an influence over your parents, you have an influence over your politicians. It's a road to sustainability Howard plans to stay on for years to come. It feels good. It feels really good. If your campus is doing something to go green, we want to hear about it. Grab your video camera and start rolling. Create a video and upload it to our website at eco-company.tv. Well, that wraps up another episode of Eco Company. Thanks for watching us. For more information on the stories in the show, or to give us your feedback, visit our website at eco-company.tv. And be sure to check us out on Facebook. We'll see you next time. On Eco Company.